Hello all and welcome to episode 9 of Enterprise Tech India Unplugged. So today we have with us uh, Ram who is a solution architect with Virtuosa and uh, our permanent guest uh, Kumaran who is uh, the chief mentor of Tiny Magic. And uh, we are available on Apple Podcasts and on YouTube and Facebook and LinkedIn, all places where you can leave your feedback. Please do subscribe and uh, make sure that we hear your feedback and do ask questions. There's some things which interest you, which you want to know about and hear our views about. And uh, if you don't have a question, you can just express your views about what you think about what we are presenting to you. So today's topic is uh, an how does a non-IT company look at uh, enterprise IT, right? How, how does a non-IT uh, uh, organization like manufacturing or retail uh, look at uh, a- a enterprise IT? And if they were to begin from scratch, where do, where do they start? What, what should they start looking for? And w- what is really important, right? So, so when we talk about enterprise IT, we are looking from all the nuts and bolts, what is really required for an enterprise to function. So, so, Ram, in your experience, what do you, what do you really think is is important for uh, new or an existing enterprise uh, in the non IT space to think about IT? What is what is really important for them to begin with? Um, actually, uh, honestly, I don't have much exposure there. But from uh, you know the basic common sense, I would uh, you know feel that. Uh, a definite uh, strong groundwork uh, before uh, stepping into any of the new initiatives is a must, right? For any new enterprise to step into some new zone, right? So from that perspective, uh, at this point, only this uh, strikes to me like they have to have a, a very good, uh, you know, groundwork. Mm-hmm. Uh, so when you say set. when you say groundwork means uh, so what what would usually be part of groundwork? Yeah, so basically the analysis of uh, you know the opportunities and the details about the competitors and mm-hmm. uh, when it comes to the implementation, what kind of infrastructure they are supposed to have and uh, whether whether it is within their budget or if it has to. Uh, come within their budget, what kind of, um, you know, compromises they have to go through. And in case if they are, uh, ident- if they have identified certain things uh, as the quality standards, which can, uh, which they can never, uh, you know, compromise, what kind of uh, initiatives they have to, uh, you know, get into to scale up their uh, financial capabilities. You know, there are so many areas, you know, but uh, since the, topic is, uh, you know, uh, open, right? So I'm Mm -hmm. not uh, really sure on which area to focus. But as a new initiative, getting into new initiative, these are the various topics that any new uh, enterprise guys may have to think about as in terms of groundwork. Okay. So Kumar, what what do you think? Where where should they start? What is the real, uh, uh, let's say, starting point for, for, for them to even start thinking of groundwork? Um, I think, yeah, I've seen what people do uh, mm-hmm. initially. And uh, classically, what they do is they try to set up their network, uh, mm-hmm. set up their servers, website, e- email servers, and stuff like that. Okay. And then try to get a a finance package or a ERP package. Mm-hmm. I would actually look at for a business to function. Key thing is communication between the different people right. and understanding what needs to be done. That's the core uh, crux of a business at any point in time. Now, as you right. specialize, what collaboration is needed? What information is needed can evolve. It will change from company to company, but it's a basic fractal. So I would say enabling that will be the first priority, which means Mm -hmm. that basically two things, get a mail of cloud, Mm -hmm. mail service, right? right? And second is uh, uh, get a collaboration kind of a thing, which is uh, 
Slack or something else because it differentiates between WhatsApp and what is official mentally. Right. Psychologically, right. there's a difference between both. Right. Okay. And uh, third one is a repository where you could share documentation. It can be uh, Office 365 or Google Suits, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. But it's one right. common place where document and information can be shared. I think these are the in the same order. These are right. the things that they need to go after. In right. fact, they can push away their money around uh, setting up networks, buying laptops, discussion rooms, access points. All those can be moved much later. Okay. And I think no. this is the first thing that they should go after. Okay. So setting up collaboration infrastructure, maybe pick it up from the cloud, right? So that is... That is the first thing they could actually do, right? So, so you, you suggested that uh, using something like Google Suite or Office 365 is the is the is the way to go because nowadays there is no point in setting up your own, own email server or uh, even your own document repository, right? So, um, and and the given that, assuming that we'll have more millennials entering the workforce, you need to have some sort of a collaboration platform which is more, more suitable for their way of communicating than the traditional old email. But email still seems to be very relevant, right? It's, it doesn't, doesn't just go away, right? No. So, so, so Ram, what do you think? Is email still relevant for, uh, for all enterprises or is it become, so, so where, where do you actually use email? Means in, in today's enterprise, where do you actually use email? Because most of it says go to Teams, go to Slack, go to maybe WhatsApp. I don't know. So, so they, where do you really use email these days? Yeah, I I see that uh, you know it totally depends on uh, you know the background of the enterprise itself. In case if they want to make it more formal, uh, email would be the better approach, right? So if they are wanting to run their uh, business in a typical official setup then uh, having an email is definitely a plus, right? Uh, because it has that traditional, um, you know, communication mechanism that most of us got used to do. Uh, but people are uh, also leaning towards, uh, you know, the recent uh, social, um, you know, communication mechanism like WhatsApp and other things, which is, uh, you know, more, uh, uh, you know, flexible. And uh, it has many other features like, um, creating multiple groups and, uh, you know, though equivalents are available in terms of distribution list and email setup, uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, uh, the decision, I think it's basically on how the enterprise itself wants to run their business or the office setup uh, in terms of establishing the communications. But uh, if it is a proper enterprise, uh, you know, kind of uh, setup, then obviously email will be a mandatory thing. That's what mm -hmm. at least I think at this point of time, maybe when in future things might change. But when it comes to some uh, freelancing kind of, uh, you know, newbies where they want to focus more on their uh, actual line of business, uh, then, uh, you know, these WhatsApp and other communication tools may come handy for their immediate uh, kickoff. But when it comes to a stabilized setup, I believe uh, still email setup holds good. But as you pointed out, cloud, uh, you know, will be the immediate, uh, you know, uh, option. They don't want to set up a separate data center or a separate exchange server for establishing all these things, which is going to be definitely costly. So as an intermediary between, uh, you know, the final established setup and uh, the novice, uh, the the newbie kind of setup, definitely cloud will be a better solution. Right. right. So, so uh, Kumaran, you mentioned that uh, uh, the network and all the physical infrastructure which is required for IT comes next. So, uh, what are, what are the real decision making points there? Should should so. Uh, how, how do you how do you think about that infrastructure piece? Means is it is it really uh, you should you sh so so I'm so, sort of what I'm trying to get to is is it a one time thing which you want to invest in or do you want to build uh, in house capabilities to manage the infrastructure or you probably want to do an outsourcing uh, so this is a sort of a 
uh, build in house or rent from out uh, from uh, from an outsourcer. So, how, how, what is the sort of options available? What, what what is your experience tells you from what you have worked with different customers? If I have to work for anything, which I do for my own company, yeah, so, yeah. so for, if yeah. you look at my own company, I look at myself as the CIO, CTO. Yeah. One thing has become clear to me, like I will not look at anything beyond three mm-hmm. years. Right. Okay. okay so, so whatever I'm doing is going to be for three years only. So okay. there is nothing like one time. Okay. If my company is going to be alive after three years, then definitely there's going to be some basic changes that needs to happen. Right. And that basically comes from the today an IT generation is three years. Right. Okay. So it's it goes the same goes for a, a asset whether it's your laptop or whether it's an operating system or it's whether it's your network service provider for everything it's like that. So it's just a three year time period. So if I'm going to just start afresh, I will not have any complexity there. No security, anything bare minimal functioning. Let's get going. In a period of six months to one year, I get more clear about things. If I want, I go and enhance it, mm-hmm. or I, I kind of stick with it for another two years, and then in my next cycle, I kind of incorporate all my learnings. Okay. So, so what, yeah. would I invest inside in-house again? No, I will not invest in in-house. Mm-hmm. I would look as for a cheapest possible outsourcing solution. I don't want to take that overhead. Okay. So, so this is actually an interesting. Uh, uh, interesting opportunity. So, Ram, so Ram you, I, yeah. you're not able to hear you in case you're talking. Yeah. So, Ram, you were about to say something. You're on mute, I guess. I no no no. I was uh, uh, you know uh, coughing, so I muted in between. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. 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 All right. So, so I, I think you mentioned an important point on on not investing too much into in-house capabilities for for a lot of these things, or especially around infrastructure. And this obviously is an interesting opportunity for for a lot of uh, small IT companies to actually uh, help out uh, a lot of the manufacturing and retail sector, where they can actually uh, create uh, uh, value for for these for these companies. And uh, from you, the interesting point which you mentioned was about security, right? So so you said. We don't have to really uh, invest into making complex security infrastructure uh, uh, and just just make uh, make sure that you have uh, bare minimum what is what is really what is really required to to work, right? So so Ram, if you were to think about security in the in the world which which Kumaran just took us, he says bare minimum. We don't want to invest in in creating big firewalls. Uh, what, what do you what do you think the security will look like? Is it is yeah, it a uh, danger? Just uh, yeah. Let me. You want uh, to talk, Kumaran? Yeah, go ahead, Kumaran. Yeah. No, no, no. I I just want to say like I, I got to drop off. I got to run. It's like eight. Okay, yeah, we we will just do a last sec- segment. You can or, drop uh, off. Yeah. You can continue, right? I can just yeah. drop off. Yeah. Sure. Okay. You can drop off. Okay. Thanks. See you guys next for yes, oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, bye. Yeah, so when it comes to security, uh, so basically the point is uh, everyone is wanting to ensure uh, the security for sure at certain level, right? So whomever who is interested, uh, you know, basically the finance uh, firms like where I work, right? Um, you know, security is the key component wherein they don't want to dilute, uh, you know, or, uh, you know, uh, the security uh, for the client data or whatever, right? So that is very crucial. So from that perspective, uh, you know, people might uh, prefer to have a proper data center set up, even cloud, uh, even though they are watching for their security. Uh, they still have their own concerns because anyways the data is going to stay somewhere outside of their uh, you know uh, perimeter right so in that case uh, you know uh, recently i've seen people are opting for something like a hybrid setup um you know like uh, azure is also offering those kind of hybrid setup where i can blend the data center uh, infrastructure with cloud and with that, I will be able to, you know, uh, bifurcate uh, the security related, um, you know, setup between these two as I feel fit. 
So uh, security is definitely a critical piece, but it again depends on the nature of enterprise. For finance, definitely it is a very crucial piece, but uh, anything which is more related to social um, uh, networking or those kind of things, it may not be that critical because they are uh, dealing with some data which is not very sensitive and things like that. So again, I would say it depends totally on the nature of enterprise who is looking for the security. So, so there you have it. Uh, apologies, we had to cut short the recording because of network issues. And as you saw and heard uh, both Ram and, and Kumaran talk about what is really important from the infrastructure and collaboration perspective in a, in a new enterprise today. And what, what they mentioned, which I just want to summarize is, is that uh, it is really important for, for us to consider that there is no point investing in making your own email server or own document storage. There's good services available from the cloud and make sure you should make use of that. And uh, from the inter uh, enterprise infrastructure pers perspective, it is better to think for a three year horizon rather than a long horizon, especially for the devices. Uh, from the uh, and uh, what Kumaran recommended was that uh, it is better to outsource most of the work which which the network uh, and the setup of the infrastructure is required rather than building your own in-house uh, infrastructure. Right. So I, I think that is that is good advice and uh, uh, this, this, that is something which which all all uh, enterprises who are thinking about uh, uh, either revamping their uh, existing system or uh, they are starting from scratch again that should consider that All right so with that uh, we'll we'll close this episode and come back to you next time uh, this time we don't have a book recommendation uh, hope next time we will have, we'll have better network connectivity and we are able to give you uh, a good uh, recommendation for for your reading and uh, improving your enterprise IT and the skills which you need for that and it doesn't matter whether you are uh, a consumer of IT or you are a provider of IT, I hope uh, sincerely that all this information is valuable to you. Please don't uh, forget to leave your comment and subscribe to our podcast. Uh, we uh, don't intend to be a video podcast, but since we produce this video, uh, please do uh, subscribe to the, the audio part of it. It is available at etiunplugged.in slash audio podcast. You should be able to get uh, all the subscription methods which you choose to. We have an RSS subscription and you can download it into any application. Thank you and see you next time.